Hello there, uh, Marvin Kilborn here, retired public school teacher. Um, before I get started on this next video, I want to first thank all of those loyal subscribers and loyal viewers who helped my last video go viral. Um, if you haven't seen that video, it's Lucille Collins Middle School. <clears throat> and that video, I explain about my experiences at probably one of the worst schools in the state of Texas. Certainly the worst school or worst job experience of my entire life. I talk about how I was working for a middle school principal who had been nothing more than a kindergarten teacher, but had the nerve to tell me I didn't know how to teach eighth grade math based on she wasn't qualified to do that. She wasn't certified to do that, but she just thought that as a principal, she I guess tell her teachers they didn't know how to do their jobs. I also caught a couple male teachers watching pornographic videos uh, in the hallway one day. <coughs> just a, excuse me, just a really crappy place. So if you haven't watched Collins, the Collins video, I suggest, I recommend that you do. You, you should find it interesting. It is a little long. Sorry about that. It's like 27 minutes long. Anyway, uh, if you're watching, following my series, uh, watching my videos, you're probably thinking, damn, man, don't you have anything good to say about public education? I mean, you were a teacher for 15 years. Anything good to say about it? Yeah, I actually do have a lot, a lot good to say about it. Um, I, I will always and for forever tell anybody I talk to that I loved being a teacher. I really did. Um, it was one of those jobs. I actually told a guy once, I looked at my <clears throat> teaching job almost like being a hobby. You know, a hobby is something you do just because you truly enjoy it. You love it. And, uh, you know, if you can make a little money doing it, even better. Well, that, that describes teaching because you're not going to get rich being a teacher. You're not going to get paid what you're worth. But it's one of those jobs that I loved so much that if I, if I could, I'd actually be willing, and if I was in the right school, be willing to do it for free. I mean, I, mean, I truly loved being a teacher. I loved dealing with the kids. I loved teaching math. So I have no regrets there. Mm -hmm. I will always say the reason I ended up leaving teaching was, if I had to use one word, administration. Um, and Collins was a perfect example. This woman had been a kindergarten teacher. They allowed her to elevate herself to a principalship, principal position at a middle school. And I did, a, I did a video on how to improve public education, and that's one of the things I, I addressed, was we make it way, way, way too easy for people to become administrators. Anyway, um, enough of that. This video is about Henderson High School in Henderson, Texas. I had become high school math certified, and after, let me see, Henderson ISD would have been my sixth school district. Uh, yeah, counting the two in, in Louisiana and the three previous ones in Texas, it would have been my sixth school district. If you count Longview, if you watch that video, I guess technically Henderson would be my seventh district. But I, I'll say it was my sixth district and it was my first <clears throat> high school teaching job. Uh, after experiencing the pettiness and the backstabbing nature of uh, intermediate schools and middle schools, I was really looking forward to moving up to the high school, hoping that it would be a better environment. And I have to admit, for the most part, it is. At the high school level, you're, you're the, the, the other teachers that I worked with, and if you're thinking about becoming a teacher, I suggest high school. Uh, the people I worked with were just at the high school level, were just more professional, more mature. Uh, they were more dedicated to teaching and just kind of minding their own business and doing their jobs. <clears throat> didn't waste their time getting involved in the petty politics of other nonsense or, or backstabbing their coworkers. I just didn't experience much of that at <laughs> two of the high schools I taught at. My next video will be about ARP High School, a little bit different there. But anyway, Henderson uh, was great. Um, actually, I know by this point, my even my wife was, was happy because <laughs> she had been through this entire multi-year experience with me, and I know even she was getting sick and tired of me having to look for a new job every year or two. And there was maybe even a part of her that was thinking, damn, Marvin, are you, are you sure it's the system that is the problem? Or maybe it's you that has a trouble, a problem fitting in. 
And there might have been a little bit of that. I'm an, I'm an older guy. I'm a retired military guy. I'm pretty set in my ways. I'm very outspoken. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to tell you what I think. And a lot of people can't handle all of that. So, and at my somewhat advanced age, we're talking my 50s by the time I got into teaching. Um, yeah, had a, not didn't have as much uh, patience or tolerance for the bullshit that goes on in, in our public schools. So anyway, Henderson got hired there. I spent two years there. Uh, it was great. The kids were great. Um, <laughs> it was a new experience, too, because the kids were respectful. Even those kids that didn't know me because I was brand new, upper level, sophomore, junior, senior kids, anytime I talked to a kid in that school, they were always very respectful to me. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you. It was just a great place. And I was a part of an eight-person math department, uh, which was awesome. I mean, it was a big department. It was a good, a good size school, Henderson High School. So I had eight math teachers. Uh, my first year was, was fantastic. It was the first school that it truly embraced me and welcomed, welcomed to me, made me feel like I was part of the team, made me feel welcome. It was just, it was just great. Um, the math department chair was a wonderful man named Ronnie Grand George, excellent team leader. I remember he would run, he would throw uh, fish fries for us, fish and shrimp, shrimp fries, uh, once or twice a year. He would do that. Um, I remember when I first got hired on, and he made sure to bring me in, introduce me to, to air, the the rest of the math team. We all went out during that the week leading up to school starting. We went out to a restaurant together so we could all get to know each other and they could get to know me being a new member of the team. It was just, it was just great. And throughout that entire first year, it was, it was awesome. Uh, I know, I remember at the end of the year, um, Trina Foster, who was an assistant principal, went into her office once and she said, yeah, Mr. Kilborn, she goes, you know, I'm so glad you're coming back next year, which, which I was. Um, she said, you've been a great addition to our team. We're just so happy to have you here and looking for your return. And sure enough, they did offer me a contract to return. Now, now one of the problems there was they, they did offer me a what's called a probationary contract. And if you've watched my video on uh, contracts, teacher contracts, you'll remember that the probationary contract is the one given to teachers in the first three years of teaching or anytime you're a first year teacher at a school. And under the Texas Education Code, they can actually offer you a probationary every year if they want. But really, there's there are guidelines. So at the end of my first year in Henderson, that was my fifth year teaching. So they really should have offered me a term contract. But they used that loophole in the Texas Education Code to go ahead and offer me a probationary contract. I didn't know a whole lot about the law at the, at the, the, tech, the code, the education code at the time. I, even if I had, I don't know that I would have declined the contract. I was just so happy to be at Henderson that I gladly accepted the invitation to return, signed the contract, and looked forward to coming back. Actually, Henderson was so great, I thought I had finally found my home. I thought I had found, finally, after all these disappointing experiences I had had, I thought I had finally found a, a great school to call my home, and, and I would have loved have stayed in Henderson for the rest of my teaching career. And looking back, if I had been able to stay at Henderson, I, I might not have ended up retiring last year or retiring when I did. I don't know. But uh, I would have liked to have stayed at Henderson and, and seen how that would have all turned out for me because I really did love it there. So anyway, I get my contract to return for the next year. And um, <laughs> it went great, too. I uh, had another fantastic year, and one of the things I've always done, because I'm a math teacher, in my entire career I always taught a tested math subject. Not all math teachers teach tested math subjects, like in math, Algebra 1 at the high school level, Algebra 1 is the only one that's actually state tested. Um, algebra 2, Geometry, Calculus, Pre-Calculus, Math Models, none of those of Geometry, none of those things are state tested, only Algebra 1. And as I've mentioned in other videos, the state tested teacher is the one under the most 
scrutiny, most criticism. They're really watching that because they want great scores. Schools want to get the, the best, best scores and also get the best ratings. So what I had always done was I looked at the school's history on test results and would always set a goal for my students that if they attained a certain pass rate on the state test, Algebra 1 state or the math state test, that they could shave my head. So in all the previous schools I taught at, uh, even though I got really good results, they never we never quite met this goal that I had set. So in Henderson, when I looked at the history, I noticed that they, they averaged around 70, 75% pass, which I think is very low. And so I'd set a goal pass rate of 90%. I said if 90% of my freshman students passed the Algebra 1 star test or state test, that they could shave my head. And it was great because that second year they achieved that. But before I, I get to that, um, I will say that right before spring break, Terry Everett, who was and I think still is the principal at Henderson, called me into his office, sat me down, said, Mr. Kilborn, I have agonized over this. I've lost sleep over this. He looked really dejected. He looked like it was really hurting him to have to do this. And he said, in the best interest of the district, we won't be asking you to return next year. Now, as I mentioned in another video, I was, I was flabbergasted. I was totally knocked off my feet, bowled over, could not believe this. I had been there for two years. This was my sixth year as a Texas teacher. Um, had a great experience at Henderson, never got in any kind of trouble, reprimands or anything. Um, I mean, it wasn't perfect. Every, you know, if you're teaching kids, so there's going to be some instances along the way. But overall, it was a great experience and never got in any real trouble. Uh, Miss Foster had told me what a great addition I had been to the school and how much she was looking forward to me coming back that second year. So I, I had every intention, every expectation of staying in Henderson. But anyway, Everett tells me in the best interest of the district, we won't be asking you to return next year. And I, again, I was, I was blown away and I just said, well, I mean, if you're going to let somebody go, you're essentially firing them. We don't call it that in teaching, but they're basically just not giving you a new contract. But it's basically, it feels like you're getting fired. And I want to know. I mean, I had been a manager in the civilian world and in the military. I'd been a what's called a hiring authority. I was the person responsible for hiring and firing people. And I guarantee you, anytime I had to let somebody go, they knew, they knew damn well why they were being let go. And anytime in the past, if I had been let go, uh, I knew why. I mean, it's just the way it works. It's a decent way to treat people. But not so in public education. It's, a, it's, it's truly a shitty profession when it comes to the way public education treats its people. They don't care about teachers. You're, you're disposable. But I asked him, I said, no, seriously, Terry, I mean, I am Mr. Everett. I, I need to know, what did I do? Why are you letting me go? He goes, no, in the best interest of the district, we won't be asking you to return. I mean, that's all they say. And that's all they're required. They're actually required under the Texas Education Code. They're required to say that. They're not allowed for some cowardly reason. They're not allowed to tell you why you're not you're, you're not being asked to return so anyway i was i was blown away by it um said well great here i go i'm gonna have to start looking for another job for next year now back to the tests i had set this goal that if 90 percent of my uh, students my freshman students had passed the star test the algebra one test then they could shave my head lo and behold the results come in 93 percent of my students had passed that test so i was ecstatic <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not coming back next year, but you guys got to look at this and be happy. I mean, you've never gotten these kind of results before. As a matter of fact, I was one of two Algebra 1 teachers and the other kid who was a first year brand new teacher. I have to at least say that he only managed about a 70 percent. So didn't do that great. <clears throat> of course, he was being asked to return. He got a contract to get to come back the next year, even though he was a brand new first year teacher. So I get this 93% and I am so happy. The students are happy. I'm proud, proud of them, proud for them. I sent out an email to the entire school saying how proud I was of my students achieving a 93% pass rate on the state test and that we were going to, they were going to shave my head in the school library 
the next day. And actually, I recommend you watch that video too. It's um, Marvin gets his head shaved, and I think it's 2014 or 2016. But you'll 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 see that I give a, a fairly long little speech before they actually shave my head. So so that those will be fun videos for you to look at. So we get together in the library. Oh yeah, before that, um, <laughs> Trina Foster, who is the assistant principal, and Terry Everett, the principal, they both came to my room not long after I sent out that email, and they, they come to my room, they knock on my door, I go out into the hallway, and they're asking me, Mr. Kilburn, how did you come up with this 93% pass rate? So I explained, I said, look, the stuff, it's on my door, the sign is above my door, I explain exactly what I do, if, not, if at least 90% of my freshman students who I've been teaching all year, I mean, I had it out, got out there, and you know, if they were in my class the whole year, and there were my students taking that test for the first time. That's how I, I, I based it on. So they're trying to tell me that, no, sir, you did not achieve a 93%. The snapshot, whatever snapshot report they're referring to, says it's a 76%. Well, 76% was for the whole school. And that was also including kids that were taking the test for a second or third or fourth time, I mean, retesters. And I told them, I only base it on my group of students, my group of freshman students. And of that group, 93% passed. And they said, no, no, you didn't have a 93%. And, and, but hey, if you want to let the kids shave your head, that's fine. We can go ahead, let them shave your head. But you didn't get a 93% pass rate. One of the things that was insulting, a couple of things that were insulting about that. One, Henderson High School always had these banners hanging from the ceiling talking about they have a history of excellence, a tradition. Henderson High School, a tradition of excellence. And as I mentioned in another video, I asked once, what's this tradition of excellence? What exactly is Henderson so excellent at? Nobody could explain that to me. So it was somewhat insulting that we'd gotten these excellent test scores back on the Algebra One state test. Yet they wanted to try to discredit that and refuse to acknowledge that and discredit me. Another thing was insulting about it was they'd spent basically two years making me feel great, telling me what a great job I was doing, telling me how, how happy they were to have me there, what a great addition I was to the school. But then they decided to get rid of me for a reason they can't even explain to me. Now, all of a sudden, they got to start finding fault in me. Certainly, well, all they were doing at this point was just justifying their own position. Hey, we've told this guy he's in the best interest of the district. He's not coming back next year. So we need to pretend that it really is a good decision to get rid of him. Makes a certain amount of sense, I suppose. I mean, you know, if you're going to get rid of somebody, you better, you better, you should, you should be able to justify it. But not only are they not allowed to explain it, <laughs> which really, it's, it's so, it's so cowardly. It's such, it's so chicken shit. It really is. So anyway, I did later. I mean, the kids shaved my head. It was great. I recommend you watch that video. Uh, left Henderson. I did find out later what exactly had happened. Um, they brought in this new athletic director. He decided he needed another or at least one more, maybe a few other coaches. I don't know, but it was at least one because my position is the one that got affected in the math department. Athletic director comes in, brings his own people in, decides he needs another coach. Uh, turns out what had happened was since he needed or wanted more coaches, they needed to convert. One of the positions they needed to convert was mine. They needed to take one of the math positions and convert it from a teaching, a strictly teaching position to a teaching slash coaching position. And there were only three of us that were on that probationary contract. Now, even though I should have been on a term contract that second year, I was still on a probationary contract. The other two, you got a guy named Josh and Russell. They were on probationary contracts as well. They were brand new first year teachers. Funny thing was they were actually Henderson High School graduates. Both of these boys, young, young men, had graduated from Henderson High School four years earlier, ran off to college, got their math degrees, became teachers, came right back to the high school they graduated from. And, and uh, <laughs> now they're, they're teaching math at the same high school they graduated from. So of the three probationary contract employees, uh, it was me, Russell, and Josh. 
And it didn't matter that I was a retired military veteran. Didn't matter that I had all those years of experience. Didn't matter that I had even seniority at the SLEP school. I was there two years. These other two boys had only been there one. None of that mattered. These were local boys, Hyatt Henderson High School graduates, so they weren't going to get rid of them. Plus, Russell's mommy was the uh, superintendent's secretary, and his family had donated land to the district for them to use to build a brand new elementary school named after the family. So, yeah, they're not, not going to get rid of him. Funny thing with this, with this guy, he's also... It's funny, he went from graduating high school, going to college, coming back to the school to be a teacher. He taught math for either four or five years. He's now an assistant principal at Henderson High School. As I mentioned in another video, this that shouldn't even be allowed to happen. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even imagine if I was being a teacher, one of my students coming back a few years later and then basically being one of my bosses. Maybe it's, maybe it's a problem with me, but I, I, I wouldn't stay. I'd go somewhere else. I'm not going to work. Not in, not, in, not in a profession. Not like this. You know? So anyway, um, those, that's my experience in Henderson High School. Uh, again, I loved it there. I really did. What's funny is Mr. Everett, two years later, two years later, I, I was in another high school. And that summer, Mr. Everett called me at home and asked me if I'd like to come back. He had a math position open that he needed to fill and would ask me if I'd like to come back. Now that was very nice of him. I, I don't, I never had anything personally against Terry Everett, great guy, seemed like. I think he made the wrong call getting rid of me rather when he should have let, you know, sad to say, should have let one of the, the other young men go based on everything. But, and I was respectful to him, but I politely declined. In, in my mind though, I'm wanting to cuss him out. And, and just be honest, man, you guys screwed me over. You screwed over a good man. Why the hell would I give you the opportunity to screw me over again? Yeah, I'm going to come back to Henderson and put me on another probationary contract. And then at the end of the year, decide it's in the best interest of the district to get rid of me. Thanks, but no thanks. As I told my wife once, Henderson High School is actually the only district that ever let me go that I'm still bitter about even to this day. It, it was just it was just rotten, just crappy what they did to me. But anyway, I did love it there while I was there. So that's my experience in, in Henderson. Uh, my next video will be about my one year at Arp High School in Arp, Texas. Then I'll move on to my last district, Tatum ISD, and I'll talk about my five, six years of experience at Tatum High School. So until next time, thank you so much for watching my videos. Uh, subscribe if you'd like, leave a comment if you'd like. Again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.